I have been using the iPad Pro 11 inch for just over a year now. And today I wanted to go over some of my favorite accessories, my most used apps, and some tips and tricks for using the iPad. Now if you didn't see my original review of the iPad and the Magic Keyboard, I will link that down in the description for you to watch either before or after this video. But to start, I always recommend customizing the home screens. You can unlock so much more when you set up the iPad for what you want to use it for. If you simply put all of your apps on the main home screen and constantly have to search for what you want to do, that is not the best experience. So what I have done is made the main page my most used apps for this video, but normally I use different home screens to break up my apps by tasks that I want to do. I have my main page for content consumption, second page for content creation, and I also have a gaming page. And finally, a page for my normal job. This allows me to automatically set up routines when I want to use my iPad for certain things. If I am looking to write a script, like I did when I wrote this, I open my iPad, click on the shortcut, and I am automatically brought to the right page, and all unneeded notifications are turned off. So I won't be sucked in to play a game that's trying to get my attention, or watch one of the latest videos from my YouTube subscription feed. I have absolutely enjoyed using the iPad this way, and if you want a more in-depth video on how I set this up, let me know down below, and I can definitely make that one in the future. When customizing the look of the home screen, you can set your icons and widgets for both landscape and portrait, and the iPad will remember how you set it up for each orientation. Now one of the better upgrades that came along in iOS 15 was Universal Control. This allows you to set up an iPad beside your Mac and your iPad will be used as a secondary monitor. I unfortunately do not use a Mac computer as my desktop, so I do not get to take advantage of this. But my wife, just recently purchasing the iPad 10 and is a MacBook Pro user, watching her use this as an external monitor makes me think that I may need to switch away from the Surface laptop to a MacBook Pro for my next laptop. Just the sheer ability of transferring files back and forth with just the drag of a mouse is a game changer. As I record multiple things using my phone and being able to use AirDrop or Universal Control would save me so much time from having to plug in a cable and copy files over to my PC using USB 2.0. Or maybe I should look at the Mac Studio. I've heard nothing but good things about that. The biggest update to iPadOS this year was the introduction of Stage Manager. Bringing the ability of having multiple windows on the iPad screen without having to need them side by side, that can still be done, but you can have multiple floating windows open at one time, and you can switch back and forth between them with a touch or a click of a mouse. As well, Stage Manager brought kind of a multiple desktop feature like they have in Windows, where you can keep currently running apps grouped together. So myself, I like to have YouTube and Notepad open so I can write down any ideas that I come up while I'm consuming content. Same as Feedly and Pocket when I keep my news and information organized together. Along with the introduction of Stage Manager brought the ability to use an external monitor. Yes, this was buggy during the beta, or really, really buggy, which forced Apple to delay the feature to 16.2. But now that it is released, it seems to be working much, much better for me. And I use this in two ways. If I am using the iPad as a secondary device, I keep the iPad below my main screen and connect it to my top monitor to maybe watch a YouTube video or Twitch stream while I'm working on something. And keep the iPad screen available for anything I may need to quickly do. But if I'm going to work mainly on the iPad, then I will connect my main screen and have what I am working displayed on the 32 inch monitor and have the iPad screen for any pencil or touch inputs that work better. There are tons of little things inside iPad OS which Apple doesn't really tell you about. But two of my favorite are the ability to take screenshots of anything on the iPad screen and that you can make markups of that screenshot. This feature also allows you to take a screenshot of the entire page. So if you're wanting to mark up an entire web page, this allows you to do that. The second trick requires the Apple Pencil, but it is the ability to take a quick note by simply tapping the pencil on the lock screen. This opens the Note app and allows you to jot down your note, lock the iPad, and it is saved 
for the next time that you open up notes. There is a whole list of these tricks and I will be making a video on this so subscribe to make sure that you see that one when it is finished and released. Now in talking about accessories for the iPad, Apple's accessories are quite expensive, but if you do eventually invest in these, I believe that they unlock the most potential when using an iPad. Like the Magic Keyboard, having a trackpad always attached unlocks gestures as well as keeping the iPad in a very good viewing angle. The keyboard, while a little cramped on the 11 inch, still provides a great experience with any large typing that needs to be done. I have almost stopped using a laptop entirely for any browsing or shopping due to the iPad's keyboard. The other accessory being the Apple Pencil Generation 2. While I do like the look of the Gen 1 Pencil better, having the ability to magnetically attach and charge is what I would choose any day of the week. But all of the features that the Pencil does unlock for the iPad, it pretty much becomes a digital notepad. I use this for taking down ideas while consuming content and writing down b-roll while watching my edits. There are other options from third-party companies, and if you are looking for a better price, then I would definitely give them a try. For my favorite apps, I will try to keep this to just a couple. I love finding apps that allow me to use the iPad for things I am already doing on my computer or on paper. Similar to what I mentioned before, I use notes and reminders for a ton of things for this channel. I write my ideas for videos and shorts in my notes and then transfer them to reminders and then when I make them, I simply just check them off the list. I usually write my scripts in notes so that they are accessible on my iPad mini, which I am using here as my teleprompter, so I can see my notes while I'm recording. DaVinci Resolve was just released on the iPad, although it wasn't the edit page that was released which everybody wanted, it was just the cut page. But I have enjoyed learning how to actually use the cut page properly, as I normally use the edit page on the PC. I use the app on the iPad to make my primary edits to my video, watch my first cut, write down what I want to do with the b-roll, and then transfer the project to my computer to finish all the other pieces of the edit. Apps like Lightroom and Photoshop Express are great for making quick changes to photos in my library. Procreate and GoodNotes are good for making drawings or notebooks with ongoing projects that I have. And now a plus one about the iPad is they're not only for getting productivity tasks done, they are also great for gaming. Whether you find a great game in the App Store or take a chance with Apple Arcade, I can say that I have found a couple great titles to play on the service. And if you are already a subscriber to Apple One, then you may already have this included in your subscription. Some great titles which I have enjoyed, Sneaky Sasquatch, Bloons, TD6, Fruit Ninja, and of course, NBA 2K. I would recommend picking up a controller for any games that do support it. I will include some down in the description, but if you have an Xbox Series console or a PlayStation 5, those controllers will work as well, and this just makes the games a little more enjoyable, but you will lose the controller for the console. So if you do like it, maybe consider picking up another controller. Now, for the conclusion, I am not telling you that an iPad can replace a computer. I think that there are still tasks that are much easier on a computer than an iPad, but that line is getting closer and closer. But who knows, maybe this time next year we can finally say that the iPad will replace a laptop. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you. Please leave a like as it helps the video tremendously. Leave a comment down below on how you use your iPad most, or what you want to see Apple release in the next iOS release for iPad. Again. Thank you for watching, and YouTube really thinks you should watch this video.